Hi guys, it's Nick here from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and this week I'm going to be giving you a sneak peek behind the scenes at our new workshop. Okay, it is by no means in any real sensible order and it's not super swept up and so I'm not going to be showing off how I've arranged all of my screws just yet. So, in one of my previous videos I spoke about what it takes to be a bushcraft instructor and for a business you're going to need all of your equipment to run that business okay so i've got workshop space on the left and a worktop which i'm slowly working my way through i've got all the shelving i could ever want and need for the business and things can come and go off the shelves in order of what we need to use next and i'm slowly but surely working my way through the world's amount of tools some of which i've inherited and some bushcraft gear and which kindly since starting this channel some of you guys at home have sent in donated and i think it's only right that we have a look at that because some of it is really top end gear and i cannot thank those individuals enough you know who you are and i know you're watching today i'm not going to name you but thank you so so much so we're going to have a quick look at some of the items which i've been been lucky enough to receive okay so through grace of running this channel and we're definitely going to take these things out and we're going to test them out in the field over this winter okay we're going to have a really good look at it all one of the items i have here after my video on satchels and Haversax, somebody very kindly sent in the Helicontex Wombat, okay, which is a much more robust uh, looking creature than the small Haversack, if you remember, that I, I reviewed before. Okay, so there's this. Inside of here, guys, is an entire new cook set system, knives, all kinds of stuff, right? So there's a lot of stuff to go through just in that alone. To add to that, Tasmanian Tiger Bag. Absolutely mega quality gear. Now, possibly a contender, okay, I'd say, to take on the mighty Carry More SF, uh, SF Bergen or SF Daysack, which you've already seen me use in our video about packing bags. Okay, and then in the middle there is the Predator, which is the military militarized version. So I should probably show you a little bit more in depth We'll have a little look, closer look at the workshop. Okay, so this is me trying to find ways to heat the workshop at the moment using the top of an old paraffin lamp on top of a cooking tray with some candles. So I'm messing about with candle technology to see if I can get the most out of that. Okay, got a bench grinder, which isn't actually down yet. So I need to sort out where that's got to go. In here is the old vinegar trick as I work through boxes and boxes of fixings Okay, and I'm just doing this to get all the rust off. This is an absolute top tip, 30p white vinegar. Okay, it brings all your fixings up like new again. Here's the sorting tray. So the fixings start off like this, coming out of miscellaneous boxes. Okay, I've inherited a lot of stuff from my father-in-law. I'm making air rifle, plinking air rifle targets that spin, all kinds of stuff. There's the, the chop saw that needs sighting. I've got this lovely little, um, vice here which is a wooden one just giving it some lithium grease in the back and it's one of those clamp on ones so you can move it along the worktop very very handy for woodworking over here in the corner there is every sort of woodworking item under the sun as i'm going to be leaning back into the craft through this winter in this little workshop everything is just about everywhere but you can just about make out okay some nut oil for finishing your craft projects chopping board oil uh, or mineral oil for finishing craft projects. I have been heating this space so far using <laughs> using this little bad boy, it's still quite warm, just had it on running. And like I said, candles, good old fashioned candles, making life easy. So an awful lot of stuff to work through, to look through, to go through, to review, to have a look at. Much of this, as I've always said, is gonna be driven by you at home in your comments about what you want to see. This has been a, a bit of a, a love-hate project for a while. Okay, so this is an old carpenter's toolbox, which I've upcycled into, as this is going to be a dog-free, child-free zone, into a bit of a gentleman's cupboard. There we are, so some select items in there for a rainy day. That's a little bit of, a little bit of quiet space and headspace in here. 
everywhere my eye goes I drop onto another piece of equipment that needs to be looked at and talked about. Okay, we've got tactical insulated tarps. Okay, so I've got to take one of these out and review it. This is the sort of thing that um, some of the elite British forces have been trialing here in the UK. I've managed to get my hands on one to show you guys at home. So that's going to go for our winter, our winter trials. Our HVB winter trials, there we go, that's what we're going to call it, HVB winter trials. Um, the Tasmanian Tiger bag I spoke about, I've got this lovely pack frame here, no name and still not sure who makes it, but that, that is itching to get tested. Check that out guys, beautiful, and it's in immaculate condition, and behind it is the good old faithful Alice pack frame, you may recognise. So there's a whole video about pack frames to be made. There really is just a world of stuff we can get into. So get into the comments. Let us know what you want to see. Let me know as soon as you know, or if you're, you know, if there's anything you're particularly interested in. It might be that you want to see some of the catering gear. It might be you want to see more well cooking. It might be you want to see me do more upcycling and creating bits and pieces here in the workshop. Uh, save yourself some money at home. Let us know in the box below, it's really, really important. Let's launch into having a look at this Wombat Haversack and its contents. Ta-da! Right, what do we got here? Modular lightweight carry equipment, cross shoulder tactical bag. So as I said before guys, I'm not really a big fan of cross shoulder stuff because uh, the more literage you have, the more weight you have, and the more disproportionately pulled over to one side you're going to feel. Um, and I certainly don't like uh, doing anything quickly, i.e. running or anything like that, in a cross shoulder bag. But that said, this seems really well thought out. Let's go person of view and have a little look and have a look through what's inside. Right, so this person very kindly sent this thing in. Having a look at it here, you can see it's got molly grip on the outside. It's made of that good hard quality Kadura, which is nice to see. Obviously they put a little rubber badge on the bottom there. Okay, so we've got tactical Velcro, which you will have seen in one of my other videos. Right at the end, I showed you how to open Velcro tactically. Ah! You've got the main compartment. Okay, and you've got these pouches inside and then you've got pouches inside of pouches. I mean, I can imagine in a past life, uh, a 762 magazine might go in there quite nicely in the front of that, but um, this could actually make quite a nice shooting bag. What have we got down the inside? We've got a small pouch right down the inside here uh, where you could probably keep some credentials close to your body. And then it's got a top flat zip, okay, with a oh, relatively shallow. That's quite a small one. Don't be fooled there. That is that's probably only a couple of inches deep. That, uh, that little pouch. It's got a flat, a tactical flap over the top, revealing another one on that side. Ah, okay, so this is the same as the other haversack I reviewed, the military style one, where you can put your hand straight inside and pull stuff out. That is a feature I really like, and what I really like is the fact that they've taken the time to put this little storm flap over the top here, uh, and it's on a decent quality zip. That's gonna really help shed water in the winter months. You can hear Tilly barking outside. We'll let her in in a minute. Okay, and then we've got on the inside here uh, another pouch as well, which is again, very, very useful. Guys, I'm quite impressed with this so far. Um, as it is, it looks like a really good piece of kit. Now inside, there are all manner of goodies. So this is the clean canteen. Uh, I think this is the litre jobby and it's got the nice metallic hook on the top there. So you can dangle that above the fire. The figure of four slippery sliding knot that I've shown you guys before um, would be ideal for that. I've suspended over a, a little branch or a stick or something. And then you could literally boil your water inside here. Take a look inside. Okay, single walled uh, threaded top. Very, very good and high quality. Uh, if only it had a nesting cup, which it does. Okay, so this person has decided to Give me one by a company called, what is this, Snow Peak. Okay, this is a titanium can, um, and that fits fairly snugly inside. But I can see what's then happened is they've decided to upgrade and move away from titanium. Uh, guys, you know my, my feelings on titanium. Um, it's lightweight, it's great, but at the end of the day, it's not stainless steel. And they've gone for, interestingly, 
they've gone for the Pathfinder. Okay, so Pathfinder School, well respected, well known in bushcraft circles, Mr. Dave Canterbury across the pond. Okay, we'll close that over and you've got a decent sensible handle there, which allows the air to move around it and, and, and keep it quite cool. It's got some measurements on the inside, which are also very helpful with your baking and your cooking. It is relatively thin walled, okay, so you've saved a bit on weight here. But that said, it's got two lovely drilled out holes in the top so that you can suspend it over the fire and turn it into a nice uh, billy can as well. Okay, so that fits rather nicely inside of there. It's definitely something that would work well with a bag like this, I feel. So let's put this to one side. Let's get rid of this titanium here. There is no room to swing a cat in this workshop, my God. Well, not yet anyway. Okay, so we've got a Bergen cover. We've got a small uh, British military MTP Daysat cover. Okay, uh, it's not particularly overly waterproof, this material, um, but it is a cover nonetheless, and it's going to give you a bit of uh, gonna break up uh, your bag. I don't know why you'd want to break up the shape of your bag, but um, there we go. Okay, we've got a, got a lid which goes with the cook set, okay, which is pretty cool. Um, these holes drilled out here and slots for spoons, very well thought through. The racing spoon, no it's not, it's a racing spork. Oh, interesting. Okay, um, who makes this one? It's a titanium light my fire spork. What else is in here? That would be the lid for the titanium, uh, snow peak, yeah, and then again a little spork or spoon cover in there. Got a little tab on the end here. Okay, let's pile this all up. Oh, oh, I know what this is, and it's in the full grain sheath as well. So, guys, I often speak about having a long knife and a short knife. This is the long knife version, okay, in a Puko style. I think this is the 140. It's got a really high bevel on it, and I look forward to using that this winter. Really good, highly rubberized grip, and a pronounced pommel, uh, tang, or pommel, which means I can strike down through there and probably make a really nice draw knife out of that uh, in a pinch. It looks like it's in four mil, I'd have said. Four mil thick, maybe more. Um, it's got from fairly deep, decent weight, so it's quite heavily weighted towards the front, as you can see. Um, but yeah, it comes with a really decent, well-made sheath. Can't argue with that. That will certainly see uh, a lifetime's worth of use and we'll look after this. Okay, what else have we got into here? A bag of knives. Okay, classic little Mora. Very nice. This is the sort of thing that would stay in the workshop uh, and I would use for crafting, okay. Probably not going to take that out in the field. It's got that uh, kind of fish scale rubberized grip. Very, very light in the hand. Ridiculously light in the hand. Um, there's a buck knife. So anyone here who's a fan of buck, there's a buck knife here. What have we got here? Oh, right, okay. 37, th uh, 637 USA buck. Look at that. Really interesting little design here. Absolutely razor sharp. We'll pop that back in there before we have a mishap. Okay. There's a couple of oppie nails I can see. In fact, there's a whole family of them. They've been breeding in this bag. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so we've got the really, really small one here. Um, for those of you who don't know oppie nails, these are classic French knives, okay, uh, often in a high carbon steel. They tend to react well with a fire striker. And okay, so they have numbers. This is the number eight. What have we got here? The number six. And they go up through the sizes. I think this will be the 10 or something like that. Oh, crikey. That's the number 12. The size of that diff the size difference from largest to smallest, just to give you an idea. Okay. Um, and uh, these are great camp knives. They're great because they're a single grind all the way down to the bottom. They're great for cutting vegetables and things like that and, and general camp duties, uh, camp tasks. I wouldn't advertise go battening through massive bits of timber it's not designed to do that and it's got a locking collar so you can just lock that over to the side there there is some contentious issue with these in the uk regards the really small one because it is three inches okay three inches or less and albeit in this plane non-lockable if i pushed hard enough that would fold around and bite me just like my old pen knife did years ago See my video on knife use and knife safety and techniques. This little thing, because it has a collar, guys, that here in the UK could be an issue because that is now a fixed, that's now a fixed blade, right? You can just go and pop these off, which is what some 
some people tend to do and then you truly have got just a classic folder in your pocket okay so that seems to conclude oh no we have got a racing spoon we've got a racing spoon it's a titanium classic sea to summit style i don't think it's it's a vargo there you go vargo uh titanium spoon interesting what's this some sort of a pouch Max Expedition, American design, made in Taiwan, pouch. Not quite sure what's supposed to go in there. Maybe a tactical wallet of some sort and keep some combat cash. I do often talk about keeping combat cash. And then really quite spacious inside with yet more pocket space. Definitely will take this out at some point this winter and we'll go and test it some more thoroughly. Absolutely made up with all the new gear, those knives and bits and pieces. Look, if I'm not going to use it directly, uh, I'm probably going to use it for teaching or for teaching purposes or clients will be al allowed to use these or maybe some of the injured veterans emergency service personnel uh, I might go ahead and donate some of that because that was also included in that little notice absolutely made up can't can't believe that somebody would be kind enough to give me uh, not only the helicon wombat bag but a bag that is absolutely full of world-class gear really really good Everything in there has its own place and its own application. Uh, okay, much of it, as I always say, depends on you at home and what you're going to be using it for. I'm very pleased I managed to go through that and, uh, and have a quick look at it. So there is so much stuff here, I could just keep going uh, for quite a while. As you can see, we're still quite upside down and just every single day is a real fight to get a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of swept up and get closer to being able to have the dream workshop area in the corner here where I can be crafting and uh, and whittling and making stuff the all important radio and uh, as well as as well as taking stuff putting it into the landy going and running courses coming back so on and so forth this has been a long time coming and it's been not gonna lie super super stressful super stressful but it had to be done and so uh you know we, we were we were in a place where we were completely outgrowing our, our facilities um so you know obtaining access to this workshop was a was a no-brainer so i made up with it if you haven't already guys make sure you hit the like subscribe and share this with anyone who you think would enjoy this kind of content and um, we're doing everything from gear reviews we're doing overnighters we are doing talking about food fire shelter water navigation we are going to be getting into the crooks of our mindset and mental health around um, the outdoors we are going to be looking at how we can better ourselves, how we can improve on our mental fitness, how we can make marginal gains day upon day using the outdoors, using natural history, bushcraft, um, and, and kind of that outdoor wilderness living skills skill set to improve ourselves. And uh, Tilly's, Tilly's over the moon. She's keen to help any way she can with a nice bum scratch. Oh, bum scratch. Bum scratch. You. Good girl. Sit. Down. Wait. You. I'm Nick Goldsmith from Hidden Valley Bushcraft. That was a very quick sneak peek, first glance at the workshop. Um, and it is uh, a pleasure to still be doing this channel over a year on from where we started. 